Hey, it's Jake with Senkut Sen. We're back talking about bending, picking up after that terminology video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about bend allowance and bend deduction. So let's start by looking at the bend calculator that's on our website. In the bend calculator, you can input the material type that you desire to be using, as well as the units that you're wanting to use. As you scroll down, you can see that they have a top and side views. We can add flanges, so we're gonna add two flanges. We can set our base lengths. We're gonna put in two, six, and two. And add angles, so we can add the angle of 90 degrees to both of these by changing the direction both to up. If we go back up a little bit, we can see that the side view is now a channel that has a two by six by two inch um, flange lengths. We scroll down a little bit further, we can actually see that the desired length and the modified lengths are different. And that's because of the bend allowance and bend deduction that we're talking about today. Now that takes in consideration of a couple details. If you're using CAD softwares, um, some of the advanced details that we can see are the a material type, the K factor, the bend radius, and the thickness. Now the calculator is doing all this stuff for us by calculating the bend allowance and bend deduction by taking into account of that thickness, the bend radius and the K factor. But we can actually use um, the CAD software to do that too. So let's look at what this calculator is actually doing in the background. So let's get into it by looking at an example. So we wanna have a flange that is two inches tall by six inches wide by two inches tall, right? So we have two bends. Uh, we're gonna wanna make it out of 50-52 aluminum, 80 thousandths thick, the bend radius of a quarter or an eighth of an inch, which is 0.125 inches, a K factor of 0.4, and an angle of 90 degrees. What we have to consider is, is that what we think is if we flatten this whole entire bend out, we would end up having a flat design that is 10 inches long. But if we actually made it so that we had a two inches to the bend here, six inches to the next bend, and two inches here, overall being 10 inches, we're gonna end up with a part that is both wider here and taller in two inches. So we're gonna end up with something that it looks something down here and something out here. And that's because, like when we talked about in the last video, is that you end up having a stretch, stretching and compression. So we have tension in here and we have compression in here. And with that, we end up elongating the material. So we end up stretching the material just like an elastic band and that causes us to have missed dimensions. So what we can do is have a calculation called the bend deduction. So this is gonna be the amount that we need to subtract from these dimensions in order to get the correct bend points and have a flange that measures correctly. But before we can do the bend deduction, we have to calculate the bend allowance. And the allowance is the actual measurement of that neutral axis, the, the stretched neutral axis in the bend that we talked about in the last video. In order to do this, we need to know the K factor, which is gonna be found in the, for like us and Seca Sen, you can find all the K factors for the material that you're using in the bend calculator on our website. So we're gonna be using that 0.4 from the website that goes along with the 5052 aluminum. And when we plug in the angle of 90 degrees and we plug in the rest of the equation, we're gonna end up getting a value of 0.2 Four six six. This is in inches. So 0.2466 is the measurement of that neutral axis throughout the bend. So now that we know how long this bend is going to be, which with uh, with the idea of having that stretch component in it, we can now calculate the bend deduction. So how much we need to remove off these dimensions in order to put the bend lines in the correct place. So in order to do this, we need the bend radius again the thickness of the material, the angle, and then this bend allowance that we just calculated. If we put all of those in, we're gonna end up getting a value of 0.1634. And this is also in inches. So how do we apply the bend deduction to our part in order to get those in the right spot? So since we end up having two bends on this six inch measurement, we need to subtract that half the bend deduction from both sides. So if we call this side bend deduction, and we have the bend deduction here, this being the bend deduction, we have to 
apply half the bend deduction to both sides of this six. So we end up actually subtracting the full bend deduction from this six inch measurement. Whereas on these flanges here, we only have one bend on this side, right? So we only subtract half of this bend deduction from the two. So we subtract half the bend deduction. And then on this one, we're also gonna subtract half the bend deduction. So if we put these values in, we're gonna end up shrinking this part up by 0.1634 over the six, and then we're gonna subtract it half of that value from the twos. So that's gonna end up shrinking this overall part, and then when we bend it, that stretch that we're gonna get is gonna add this bend deduction back to the part, enabling us to get these measurements of two inch, six inch, and two inch. We have made it a little bit easier for you guys. If you go onto the website and you put in these values in the bend calculator on our website, you'll actually end up seeing these bend deducted values already there. And so you can double check it. If, uh, if you end up using um, a CAD software, typically you can put in the K factor, the bend radius into your CAD software and it'll give you these reduced values that match that bend deduction. So that's it for bend deduction and bend allowance. Stay tuned for more.